So in this topic, we're going to be talking about plate tectonics, or the study of how the crust of the Earth is shattered into pieces that move around, creating a lot of different things for our planet. So the Earth has not always looked the way it looks today. And the first person to come up with that was a scientist called Alfred Wagner. And Alfred Wagner was uh, interested in the fact that the continents seem to be together he thought that they almost looked like puzzle pieces that could fit together and his theory was that the continents used to be together in a big big continent uh, called Pangaea and that this continent broke apart and spread around the earth because of tectonic plate movement now he didn't really at the time have um, a mechanism to explain how this happened but he certainly did pull out a lot of evidence to support his theory so Alfred Wagner is considered the father of the plate tectonics theory. And he was the first one to come up with the idea that the world used to be in one supercontinent surrounded by a super sea. And we're going to talk about that at the end of our video series. But first, let's talk about how he got there. So Alfred Wagner discovered several things. First, he looked at climatic evidence. And he said that, well, ice cores and tree rings are telling us that these places of the world have had several different uh, climates than they have today. For example, Antarctica used to be tropical. And other places like South America and Africa had very, very uh, different climates than they have today, but similar climates to each other. It's almost like they used to be all in the same part of the world. And so one of the pieces of evidence that he pulled out together was climatological evidence using tree rings and ice cores, which we talked about before the year, in the year. He also looked at fossils, and he figured out that the fossils were available across many of the continents. For example, Triassic reptile called Listosaurus, as you can see, was in India, Africa, and Antarctica fossils. And if you look at the green one, which is the fossils of a plant, that one was in every single continent of the southern part of the world. And this same is true about other fossils across the world, that you can find them in one continent and in another at the same time. So this seems to indicate that these animals were once in the same landmass and that those pieces were broken, which then separated the animals. Um, and that's the idea that he came up with. Another thing, obviously, when you look at the map, look at South America. It looked like it fits like a puzzle piece into, uh, into Africa. In North America, looks like a, a puzzle piece with uh, Eurasia. And India certainly seems like to, to fit on the, on the east coast of Africa along with Antarctica which seems to fit in, uh, in Australia. And so these puzzle pieces, uh, it was another thing that he made it quite clear for him that the world used to be a supercontinent. And lastly, there's also the idea of rock formations. For example, like a mountain range. And in several cases you find examples where a mountain range starts in a continent and then, it, considering how it would fit with the other continent, if you put them together, then there it is, the mountain range continuing in the opposite continent. It's almost like as if there was one mountain range that got split in half as the continents drifted apart. And this is also true about a lot of the properties of the rocks at the edges of the continent seem to match the properties of the edge in another. For example, the edge of South America seemed to fit the edge of Africa and so forth. So, climatological evidence. Puzzle pieces evidence in, of the continents, fossilized evidence, rock formation evidence, all put together gave Alfred Wagner a really good idea that the continents used to be together in what's called a supercontinent, in this case, Pangaea. Unfortunately, Wagner was missing the mechanism to explain how this happened. He didn't know what could possibly be causing the continents to be moving. And the lack of an explanation for how can these continents possibly move is what led many scientists to discredit his findings. In fact, what Wagner said is that it was like as if the continents were floating in the oceans and that's why they move slowly but surely. But for most people that didn't make sense since the land was much denser than the oceans were and so that didn't make any sense. And, but the other idea that he had was that the continents were like these puzzle pieces floating in the ocean that was underneath them somehow and he was not that far off now we understand that in fact the puzzle pieces are floating in an ocean of magma that there is molten lava underneath the crust and as the lava moves it moves the continents with it 
Now we know this mechanism, but how do we figure that out? We figure that out by studying the bottom of the ocean and, and noticing something in particular about it, specifically the mid-ocean ridge. The missing mechanism for Wagner's hypothesis was seafloor spreading at the mid-ocean ridge. But it wasn't until the 40s, uh, on the 20th century, that we had enough technology to actually go down deep there and study those things, or at least send sonar pulses to see how it looked like, and then discover this very deep gash or rift in the middle of the oceans to indicate that something was going on, and since it was very at the middle, we, they come up with this plan or this idea that the seafloor is spreading. And in another video, we're going to be talking about how seafloor spreading provided the evidence to support the continental drift theory, launching the plate tectonics theory into mainstream science into the middle to, middle to the late 20th century. So we'll talk about that on our next video. But first, we've got to take a pause and talk about the layers of the Earth. So I'll see you guys in that video.